Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video, we are going to be making a completely pointless project that demonstrates how we can use the push and pop state events in JavaScript to take advantage of these back and forward buttons here. So I just selected um, boxes one, two, three, and four. Now if I press the back button, it selects box three, box two, box one, and the forward button works as well. So let's get started making this completely pointless project with a very cool API, in my opinion. OK, so let's start off with the HTML. It's pretty simple. We have our basic kind of boilerplate HTML5 document here. The only things to note really are the link to our CSS file here. Our JavaScript file is linked down here. And then we have this div with a class of boxes that contains four divs, um, each with a class of box and their respective IDs that correlate to their position, one, two, three, and four. And we'll be using these IDs as handles in our JavaScript file. The CSS just is styling up a little bit, um, not too much of interest there, and our JavaScript file is empty. So if we take a look right now, this is what our page looks like. We have our four divs, one, two, three, four, and they are boxes beautiful. So now we're going to make it so that when you click on one of these, it'll go into a selected state. And then we can use the back and forward buttons to change which one is selected um, based on the history of which ones we've selected. So if I select one, two, three, four, then press the back button three times, it'll go three, two, one, and the first one will be selected again. I'll be able to press the forward button and stuff like that. If I say one, three, and then press the back button, it'll go back to one. So pretty easy uh, to understand. Kind of, I mean, very similar to how you would expect a back and forward button to work. It just navigates through the history of your actions. So let's head back over here to the JavaScript and select our boxes by saying let boxes equal document dot get elements by class name box like that and I'll wrap that in array dot dot from so that we can use um, boxes dot for each here and we'll get a box and we're just going to loop through each of these and say let id equals b dot id okay and then we'll add an event listener for when each of them is clicked so I'll say b dot add event listener click and then we'll get an event object here um, I don't know that we're actually going to have to use it, but whatever. And I'm just going to say um, on click history, history dot push state. Now this is a special method. Remember um, the history, well the history object um, is what we're navigating back, uh, we're navigating through when we click the back and forward buttons, the stack of pages that you have in your history. It's kind of like an array. Um, and that's an easy way to think about it. If you use push state, because it's kind of like an array, so you can use like array.push or whatever. Um, so we're pushing a state, and it takes three arguments here, some data, which in this case is just going to be the ID of the, um, the box that we just clicked on. Okay, so that's our data that we're passing. The title, which I'll explain in just a bit. It's actually not supported by, I don't think any major browsers support it at this point in time, um, but why not use it? Future proofing kind of. Um, I'll just say selected an ID, whoops, if I can type ID. Um, it's not supported by any browser, but might as well put it there. And then this, this is a fun one here. We can put in any URL we want. So I'm gonna put in a URL that does not exist. So I'm going to say selected equals um, ID, just like that. And that URL does not actually exist, but that's where the fun comes in. Now, of course, we want to actually select the box. So I'm going to say um, select box. We'll write this function in just a sec. Select box by ID, like this. Then up here, I'm going to say function select box like this. It takes an ID. And then we're going to loop through 
all of our boxes, like so. And if, actually no, we can say b.classless.toggle, and then we can force the selected class one way or another based on whether or not b.id equals id, like that. So now only the box that is selected will have the selected class and we'll be able to select set and we'll be able to deal with that in the CSS. <sighs> By the way, all of this code is going to be on GitHub, so you can check that out. The link is in the description. All right, so we're selecting a box and pushing to the history. So I'm going to save this, come over here, refresh, click on this, and it's selected, and we get this URL right here. Now, selected equal box one. This URL does not actually exist. If I copy this and open up a new tab, paste it in there, press enter, object not found. But it works here because um, we're just pushing the state. We're not actually navigating to that page. Now, I could set up my server so that any request to this um, path, to, um, to this path, would go to my index.html page. I can configure Apache to do that, but um, I'm too lazy to do that, and it's out of scope of this tutorial to show you how to configure Apache to do that. So ha. Huh? <laughs> it's just the JavaScript can set that. And the browser's like, I don't even care if that page exists. You're telling me that you want to set the URL to that? Fine, I'll set the URL to that. I don't care. That's your problem. Which it is. It is my problem. But whatever. Now, the problem is we push the state. If I press the back button, nothing happens except the URL changes to what it was before. And if I press forward again, that happens. Um, what's happening when I press these buttons is an event is being fired called the pop state event. But obviously, we're not listening for it. So let's go implement that listener. It's fired on the window object, which I guess that's OK. I when I first was learning this API, I figured it would be on the history object, but no, it's on the window object. So window dot add event listener pop state, and we get an event object, which we are going to use in this case. Okay, so now e, um, remember we said push state right here, and this variable or this object right here is going to turn into um, e dot state. Okay, so now e.state is going to have a property called id, and that's the id that we're after. So um, I'm going to say select box e.state.id. All right, save that. Come back over here. Refresh. Oh, it's not found. So I'm going to take this. I'm actually going to cut this, open up a new tab, paste it in there, and press enter. The reason I'm doing that is it's just going to totally clear the history stack of any, like, wacky JavaScript that may have been in there that I didn't actually want. So I'm going to click on the first one, the second one, the third one, press the back button, two, one. Now if I press the back button again, it should go back to the original state when I first loaded the page, but it doesn't. Instead, I get this error here, uncaught type error, cannot read property ID of null, and that is occurring, well, I know where it's occurring. It's occurring right here because there is no initial state set. Now we can fix this in well, two ways off the top of my head. The first is check if e.state is null. And if it is null, then we'll just set, so, uh, then we'll say, well, I'll just show you. We'll say if e.state uh, does not equal null, then we'll run this piece of code. Else, we'll run this piece of code, select box null. Okay, there's no box that has that ID. So, it'll just revert to its original state. So if I come over here, I'm gonna copy the URL out of here, close the window, paste it in here, so that I just reset the entire history stack so we don't have anything messing us up there. Say one, two, three, back button. Oh, and for the heck of it, let's say forward button. Oh, selects three, perfect. Back button, back button. Okay, there we go, it's in our initial state. The other way that we could fix this bug is by using History dot replace state. Now this piece of code is obviously this this line of code is obviously going to be run on first load, and what replace state does is well kind of what it sounds like. Instead of adding a new um, record to the history stack like push state does, it's going to replace the current um, 
the current entry in the history stack with id null and I'll just say um, default state here. Um, remember that's not actually supported by any browsers, it doesn't do anything. And um, the URL is just that. Okay, so save this. Now, if I reload the page, actually no, copy the URL, open up here. All right, now one, two, two, three, four, three, two, one, and there is our default state that was set. Now, um, as for what this title is supposed to do, um, if I get, say, one, two, three, four, and then press and hold down on this back button, it just says push state and pop state, push state and pop state, push state and pop state, push state and stop pop state. Now, what I believe that title is supposed to do is change what is uh, the title of the page in here, but it's not supported in Chrome, and I don't think it works in Firefox either. Um, but that's that's what it would do if it actually worked. Anyways, that is a simple introduction to how push state and pop state works with JavaScript. <laughs> um, I had a heck of a time learning this API. For some reason, I just couldn't get past it, so. I, I couldn't understand it, so I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. I hope you learned something from it, and um, that it now will not take you forever to actually get this API working um, when you use it in your website. The code is on GitHub. Um, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jacob, and have a good one.